in this room. Come along with me. Where to start? Where to start? Where to start? Okay, so let's see. Where do I start? Okay, what one stood for? Cronenberg. You ever heard of him? Body horror is probably one of my favorite things. Have you ever pulled a gun out of your stomach? <laughs> you, you'll believe in video drum that you can do that. I'm definitely here for one of my Letterboxd top fours. I'm a massive Merchant Ivory fan. Room of the Viewer is one of my all-time faves. It's a film that only gets better as the cast ages. I mean, you've never seen Daniel Day-Lewis if you haven't seen him do Cecil in Room of the View. I definitely need this one. This is on the Letterbox Top 250. And I read a review on the Criterion staff pick that said, when you're hungry and horny and don't want to pick a lane, I'm sold. God help us. This is a safe space, the Criterion Closet. This is the safest space in New York City. I wept openly watching the end of Roma, so highest recommendation. Come closer. This one you want to see. This is the Before Trilogy, the, probably the Letterboxd Trilogy. Ethan Hawke, Julie Delpy, they ruled the 90s with Before Sunrise. I think everyone wishes they had this love story, but we'll settle for the ones that we do have. So. What is... Oh, that cover. I'm taking this just for the cover. I'm gonna know her well after I take this out of the closet. Uh, we were talking earlier in here. Is this maybe the most unrewatchable movie in existence? Maybe the most anxiety inducing movie? Uncut Gems? I'm hunting for a couple of recent, what we like to call letterbox hits. Not those movies that are absolutely amazing in and of themselves, but that the community of letterbox just wraps itself around. And obviously, obviously. Celine Tiama's Portrait of a Lady on Fire, just one of the best. Once you get this from the Criterion Collection and rewatch it and rate it again, don't forget that the rating on Letterboxd is flames instead of stars. That might have been my idea on a Friday over beers in the Letterboxd office. Oh, what do I have here? Come and see in the Letterboxd Top 250. The cover is terrifying. If you have seen the film, you'll know that this shot is probably still lingering in your head. Definitely one of the best films of the last year was The Worst Person in the World. And one of the best things about Criterion releases is how they get artists to reinterpret the film later. So when they're not trying to chase audiences to get into cinemas, but they're trying to chase film lovers like us to put these in our own closets. Criterion, can we get a 4K of this? Don't let them hear. Can we get a 4K of this? Harakiri in the letterbox top 250. So add this to your watch list. Buy the Blu-ray from Criterion. I will refund your money if you don't like this movie. Don't hold me to that, but I'll say it anyway. It's fantastic. Criterion collection. Blu-rays, number six. Beauty and the Beast, John Cocteau beautiful filmmaker. There's something about the black and white in this that doesn't feel like any other black and white back in the day. So I've never seen any of the Beauty and the Beast besides this one. So I can't say how they differ, but this one is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> something really thrilling about being in here, about being in this place that we've seen so many filmmakers come into. And it's just, I don't know, it's just really exciting to share it with you. Thank you for coming on this visit with us to the Criterion Closet. Um, make sure to hashtag my Criterion Closet and show us your pics and stay tuned for the next Letterboxd visits. Bye.